How can I avoid a relapse of sin? First, it is important to state that sin is a cancer to the soul. It mangles the soul. It tampers with the DNA of your soul that is wired to worship God and God alone. And when sin comes into the life of a man, that man will choose to worship anyone or anything other than God. Most times we end up worshiping self. We end up worshiping pleasure, form. We even end up worshiping man. We end up worshiping money, fame, and more importantly, we worship the devil. And you know, when we start indulging in sin, it seems to be exciting, fun, pleasurable. But the end is always bitter. The consequences are always grave. And the Bible said this so well, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. That is why anyone who has come to that point of realizing the exceeding sinfulness of sin, as one author puts it. That is why anyone who truly know the weight of sin, the price Christ has to pay for our redemption, anyone who has surrendered to Jesus Christ and benefited from the redemptive power of the blood of Jesus, understanding what Christ went through, while he was there on the cross, will always want to ask himself or herself, how do I avoid nailing my Savior on the cross over and over again? How do I avoid a relapse of sin? How do I avoid betraying Jesus and making the devil have a fun feet day? So this is a very legitimate question, and I'm very, very touched by it. It is something for us to properly consider. While thinking about this question, I chose to rephrase it this way. How do I live at both sin and temptation? The first thing that comes to mind is drawing closer to God. The Jews, they have the saying that God is like the light. Prosperity is like your shadow. If you turn out face the light, your shadow will always follow you. But if you turn away from the light and you walk into the darkness, after a while, you will not see your shadow, not see the light. God is like the sun. If you want to avoid a relapse of sin, you must get close to God. And getting close to God involves the discipline of prayer, of studying the Word of God and meditating on the Word of God. This street is, if you want to get close to God, that, that's having communion, a fellowship with God. Look at what the Bible says. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Did you observe that what the cleansing of your hand, the purifying of your heart is predicated on drawing close to God? If you don't draw close to God, you will not ever call sin sin. You will call it form. But as you get close to God, your soul becomes sensitive. Your spirit becomes sensitive to sin. You react to it even while others are applauding it. The Bible also says in the book of Psalms, David asks the question, how can a young man purify his way? Look at the answer. How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking it according to your word. With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the ways of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your war. This is the first step. If you are not close to God, if you are not meditating on the words, if you are not studying your Bible, if you are not prayerful, see, you continue to go back to your vomit. The next step, if you want to avoid the relapse of sin, you must maintain fellowship with the children of God. So I'm going to say, ah, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a church person. No, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, several times Paul was writing, admonish one another. Why do you admonish one another? He said he gifts to the officials. He wrote, he said every gift that was in the church is for the edifying, the building up of the body. It's for others. So if you are not there, how will you benefit from what is going on? So we must maintain fellowship with others who have been saved by grace. Look at what the Bible says. 
And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exalting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Purpose of fellowship, we stir one another towards love and good work. We exalt one another, telling one another that this world, everything is time. This is not our permanent home. We must maintain fellowship so that you can be stirred to do good things and not go back to the way of sin. The Bible also says this, If we say we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. And in the book of Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, the Bible says, Iron sharpens iron. So when you are together with others who are striving to lean above sin and temptation, you are sharpened, you are edified to overcome. The third way to avoid the relapse of sin, this is very effective, oh, take note of this, is by avoiding and fleeing from people and situations that will make you sin. At times, the most effective, it's not at times, at all times, the most effective defense is to ensure danger never gets close to you. You run. The Bible says, fleeing. In Africa, there's this parable that the most potent fortification against gunshot is that they did not even shoot you at all. So you must flee. Ask yourself, what are the situations? Ah, someone said he wants to marry you and you are in a relationship, studying yourself in a courtship. And he said, come and spend the weekend. He's staying alone. There is no chair in the room, only bed. You want to stay in one room. That's where you're debating and coming out. Ah, you think you are dating an angel. You are in courtship with an angel. Flee. Avoid situations. You have friends while you are seeing the world. You are addicted to drugs. And you have friends that smoke with you. But you say, ah, I want to chill with my guys. And you know, whenever you chill, you draw, flee. You must avoid. Look at what the Bible says. Flee from sexual immorality. Paul told the Corinthians. That's, that's what we see in the book of 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18. Later on, Paul told the Thessalonians, Avoid every appearance of evil. Now, may the God of peace and harmony set you apart making you completely holy and may your entire being spirit soul and body be kept completely flawless in the appearing of our lord jesus the anointed one you see here also that making you only is predicated on you avoiding you must choose to avoid god has given you a brain his spirit has spoken to your spirit danger danger wrong but you want to romance evil and think you will not be contaminated Oh, I'm a Christian. I just, I'm just going to club for the phone. Guy, man, you are there. You are going to see naked women. From phone, it will change to an erection. Avoid. Even if this is the life you lived before, since Christ has paid the debt, since Christ has redeemed you, avoid and flee. Otherwise, you will go back to your vomit. The last, which I believe everything I've said rests on, is by submitting to God and resisting the devil. If you are a Christian, if you have left the life of sin, you are a prime target of the devil. And this is not to scare you. The devil is coming for you. You can flee. You can avoid. You can run from temptation. But you see, a time will come where the devil will trap you. You cannot run from it. What did the Bible say you should do? Say at that point, resist the devil. By resisting, say, no, I will not do this. If I die, let me die. That's resisting the devil, stabbing your blood. I am a Christian. I've been bought with a price. I will not do this. But do you know, for you to resist, you must have to put me something. Let's go to the Bible, the book of James. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you do not submit to God, you cannot resist the devil. Darkness does not chase away darkness. It takes only light to chase away darkness. So you must learn to submit to God. When you submit to God, he will give you the strength to resist the devil. Because in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, Paul told the Philippians, Walk at your salvation with fear and trembling. In 13, he said, It is God that gives you both the ability to will and to do. At times, the will is not of yourself. All your body, all your wounds, every part of it says, Sin, sin, sin. But you just see that strength to say, Lord, I surrender. Help me. And help will come from above. The Bible also tells us to arm ourselves with the armor of salvation in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, we read from verse 10. When you go to the catalog, of the various weapons we have in that armory, when you arm yourself with this, 
you'll be able to avoid a relapse of sin. I think this is a very legitimate, sincere question that every Christian should be asking. You have a blueprint as you submit to God, as you fellowship with Him, as you fellowship with the brethren, as you flee and avoid anything that will take you back to sin, you will live above sin and temptation. You will last here as a Christian and you will have an everlasting life hereafter. God bless you.